Good morning, Eric Pollard. Hey, good morning. Wow. So you tweeted, there is little doubt we'll see the U.S. versus Trump case in the courts. Uh, and when that happens, the White House and Fox News will have to target the judicial branch as part of the deep state. I mean, it, this seems like where this is going, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've always I've always thought that. I mean, I've always thought that Trump would deny an interview. The question is, does Mueller want, does he need the inter- interview or not? I mean, I, he, he can he can present his case and say, you know what, he didn't want to talk to me, here's the case, or he can take Trump to court, which is what I had always thought he would do. Trump would refuse, Mueller would get a subpoena, he would be forced to testify. It would, it, it would all end up in the Supreme Court. Maybe in the meantime, Trump would pardon himself, even though wow. it says right on the Justice Department website, a president cannot pardon himself. Uh, so, yeah, I've always thought this is going to end up in the courts, uh, Mueller, you know, the idea was, well, it won't end up in the courts because Mueller can't indict a president. This is all going to be political. Mueller has to send his report to Congress. What what Republicans want to do politically, that is where this will be decided. It won't end up in the courts. But I think it will because Trump will refuse to testify and or he'll just pardon himself. So it, I think it will end up, it'll be political the way the Clinton impeachment was decided in Congress, but there's also going to be court cases. And and this this the frantic spinning from Giuliani and Trump over the weekend yeah. um, indicates they know where all this is going. They have no legal footing. This idea uh, that they don't have to sit for for a Mueller um, you know meeting or or a subpoena. I mean, they're all they're it, they're just daydreaming. I don't I don't. This isn't based in any kind of American law that anyone can recognize. Well, yeah, and what is the point of it? I mean, what 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 is the point of leaking this? I mean, this, oh, this the is point, yeah. yeah, the point is to yeah, I I I I'm almost sure this came from Giuliani or, or or the Trump team. The point is to launch an offensive. The point is to get on Fox News. Fox News this morning is already saying it's quote settled law that uh, a, a president doesn't have to testify. Uh, when obviously that's not true. The, the, the Supreme Court, the courts have never um, addressed specifically whether a president um, can ignore a subpoena. Ken Starr subpoenaed Trump. They negotiated uh, that testimony that he gave eventually. Um, Nixon was going to be forced to. He quit. So in the, in, in the last two cases, it hasn't gone to the final resting place. Uh, the courts have been very suspicious and haven't they certainly have looked down on the idea that the president, you know, is above the law. I mean, Trump is basically saying, you know, if I send my buddies to rob a bank, uh, I can call up the FBI on Monday and say, oh, by the way, you can't investigate that bank robbery. So I think they leaked it because they want to get this uh, offensive going, this PR campaign that, of course, the president is above the law. I mean, I guess that's where they're going. Well, you know, it's, inter- it's a lot of speculation. Uh, Brad Moss on Twitter said, I've had a few hours to think on it. I view this leak of the Trump me- legal memo as an indicator that something likely is coming in the next couple of days. This Camp David tri- trip looks even odder now, 10 days before the North Korea summit, and the president isn't in prep with the NSC. Um, yeah, I- instead, Giuliani's going insane. Uh, Trump's now going yeah. insane again on Twitter about all this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, we were speculating on if it's a Manafort thing, if Manafort's flipping, because he's obviously become a coffee boy already, right? Right, right, uh, right. Trump hasn't really mentioned uh, Manafort much, and all of a sudden, he, you know, he's suddenly interested in him. Um, but again, I mean, this idea that Trump was ever going to sit down with Mueller was a joke, that there was ever going to be a good faith effort to uh, pass along any information. And again, so it... It's up to, you know, we pretend we know what's going on with the Mueller investigation, and every time they come forward, we realize we really don't know what they're doing, and and they're so far advanced. Uh, But it seems like the main issue is whether Mueller will uh, demand uh, attention from Trump and and it'll go to court, or he'll just, you know, he thinks, you know, he'll have an overwhelming report he can release, and then he can say, oh, by the way, Trump, wouldn't talk to me uh, and take it from there. But uh, all of this was obvious from, you know, last December and January when when we first started hearing that, you know, Mueller was trying to set some sort of boundaries to meet with Trump. The idea that Trump was ever going to do that 
was zero because he's a pathological liar. Yeah. Uh, well, and, Eric, I mean, it he's seems... lied in depositions for years. Yeah, <laughs> and it seems like you don't even have to be a lawyer to go, oh, well, this is yet another <laughs> count of obstruction of justice. Um, as Brian Class tweeted this weekend, the president of the United States dictated a letter trying to cover up a meeting that his son, son-in-law, and campaign manager eagerly took, which offered high-level sensitive information about his opponent as part of the Kremlin's support for him and then lied about it. I mean, yeah. do you need to be a lawyer? To, right. To go, no. right? I mean, do you, do you need to be a, 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 a lifetime Republican prosecutor like Mueller is? Uh, and again, that's why I'm wondering, maybe in the Mueller, in the end, Mueller will just pass on Trump because he is going to have so much information, and it's going to be such a damning report when he puts it all together and his team puts it all together and they follow the money. And I think they're going to say, here, you know, here it is. If Trump doesn't want to answer questions, um, that, that's his right. And, and, and here's this massive chronicling of the criminal enterprise that was the Trump campaign. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, people, you know, there, there doesn't seem to be much emphasis, particularly on the press, uh, in terms of the downside of Trump refusing to answer any of these questions. And the downside is it is going to be an amazingly one-sided story uh, yeah. by, tr by Trump's own refusal uh, because he knows he would have to lie his way through it. So, you know, I, uh, there, there seems to be this idea that Trump is being, you know, this whole narrative that he plays 3D chess and he's out <laughs> in front of everyone else. Uh, I don't think he's going to out smart Robert Mueller. I just don't think it's yeah. physically, genetically I, possible. I agree. I agree. Um, one last tweet I wanted to read you because you did, do, you know, talk about this all the time. But uh, Mr. Weeks tweets: Hillary Clinton got 17 million votes in the primary. Trump got 14 million. Bernie Sanders 13 million in the general. Uh, Hillary got 66 million votes. Trump got 63 million. She beat them by millions, and yet people still push this narrative that she's not liked. White men are establishment, and she beat them without the anger. Um, and it is amazing how they just this narrative just never goes away, right? Well, right. That is that crystallizes the entire, frankly, the double standard. You call it sexism, call it whatever you want. Um, the first woman to run for, you know, to to secure the nomination, you know, she wasn't authentic, right? She didn't come across as friendly. She wasn't. She was too calculating in all that stuff. Um, the sad part is we're still, you know, we're still talking about that in 2018. There has been zero self-examination. And if there is another woman nominee in 2018 or 2020, uh, which, you know, there's a chance, uh, there's no indication that the, that the press uh, and our sort of public um, dialogue has, has learned anything. Well, you or know, that, any, or that to... anything has changed. And if, if there is another nominee, guess what? She's not going to be authentic. She's yeah. not going to be trustworthy, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I have to say, there's a, there's a through line with what this, you know, I, to me, these continuing attacks on uh, uh, Joy Reid. I was talking to my friend Lisa Bloom this weekend about it, that it, it is, you know, apparently Greenwald is one of the people behind this. But, it, you know, as my friend Fernand Armani tweeted, he said, it's time for the cabal behind this calculated effort to try and bring down Joy, Joy Reid to move along. The posts are over 10 years old. She already apologized. She isn't going anywhere. She won. You lost. Get over it. Enough already. <laughs> um, there does, but there, I mean, there is a misogyny that you're just like, what? This is one of our strongest voices in the resistance. What, what, what are we doing here? Well, I think some people don't like her politics, and so they're, they're, uh, you know, she's a, uh, you know, she was an adamant Hillary supporter, and and uh, and, and there, there does seem to be a fixation. I can't really think of another male pundit whose people who, whose whose ten year old archives of blog posts are going over. With a fine tooth comb, uh, it does seem to be a unique standard that she's facing. And again, it's ten years old. Uh, I don't care. I'm on her show all the time. I love her politics. I, I literally couldn't care yeah. um, what she wrote ten years ago. She has apologized for it. She's the one of the most important voices yep. we have. Well, and, and that's why, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You, you become a target. Look, yep. you, you, and if you're a woman, you become a, a particular kind of target. I mean, well, it's and, just, and, it, and it is particular. Yeah, and it is particularly chilling right now, Eric, where we have, you know, people just rooting to like end people's careers and take away their platforms, whether it's Sam B or Joy Reid or you know, and whereas like, I think you and I would argue that it's a little. Bill O'Reilly took himself down. Roseanne took herself down. You know, I mean, this was. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it was interesting the last the last week. You know, the two targets were 
to women, you know, Joy Reid and, right. and, and Samantha Bee. You know, the Samantha Bee thing, I think, was, you know, wildly overblown. She lost a grand total of two advertisers, one of whom hasn't been on her show in two years. Right. Uh, you know, the, the marketplace kind of spoke on that one, and the marketplace shrugged, and, and Samantha Bee did the right thing, uh, and I think, and addressed it very quickly. She doesn't have a ten, five-year history of of trolling in the in, in the gutter like Roseanne Barr did, right? Um, and and she, uh, but it was interesting that they both became targets. <laughs> yeah, Michelle Wolf was interesting. She said that you know what she thought was you know uh, interesting is the why did Roseanne get a, <laughs> a show again in the first place? The stuff oh, has been yeah. out there for years, you know. Um, but anyway, you you know so your piece real quick before you go, U.S. allies yeah. lash out at Trump's stupid counterproductive trade war. I mean, once again, we're forced to ask, is he a Russian agent truly, or is he just blindingly uh, incompetent? Because you said Trump's bizarre decision to further wage war with some of the U.S. closest allies, Canada, has left our longtime partners stunned and angry. Meanwhile, America's real trade foes, such as China, stand poised to benefit from Trump's reckless policies. Um, you said the Trump administration rolling out the tariff under the banner of national security, which Trudeau openly mocked. Um, yeah, what 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 is happening? Is is it just more self interest for you know Ivanka's trademarks or whatever that he just uh, uh, you know the, the, yeah I mean the tariff is and 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 I didn't get have a chance to get into that but yeah Russia obviously is one of the beneficiaries of all mm. this because because mm. who's who's the EU going to turn to now the, one of the people they're going to turn to is, is Russia but the tariff really is and you know everything kind of gets washed over and, and, you know, lost in the shuffle, and that's exactly the way he wants it. But, I mean, you can't find five authentic, uh, objective people who support this. I mean, the re- yeah. even Republicans, you know, Mitch McConnell saying today it's going to hurt Kentucky. Uh, it's going to hurt the red states. It, the you Chamber s- of Commerce hates it. The right. U.S. Steel Workers. You said 12, it. you write 12 of the 15 states likely to take the biggest tariff hits, yeah. red states that supported Trump. It makes no sense. And, and 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 you're just left to be completely stunned and bewildered. Um, and but who's benefiting? Russia is benefiting. China is benefiting. Uh, and and again, but you know, if you look back last week, tariffs was probably the seventh or eighth most important or shocking story. And it's just it's yeah. You know. Yeah. We all shrug after a while. We, we, no one knows what to do. But that, on a pure policy level, is fascinating. Yeah, the literally the only people it's hurting or initially it's going to hurt everybody. Initially, the people it's going to hurt the most are clearly Republicans and and people in red states. And you and you just look at it and you're like, what are we doing? Yeah, I know. I know. It's strange times we find ourselves in. Thank you, Eric. See you next week, sir. OK, good luck. All right. Thank you. <laughs> the way he says that always really feels like it may be the last time. Good luck. Buckle up. We may not be here. Yeah. Like he's not going to help in any way, but just good luck. Good luck.